Moin! In this basics video, I show how to remove the typical layer look of FDM 3D prints and create the foundation for a mirror effect through electroplating. Additionally, I share a couple of do's and don'ts along with some important tips on what to consider when preparing 3D prints for electroplating. Let's go! First of all, I print dome stoppers for various vases that I designed. My printer does a great job and the prints come out well. However, I still get typical 3D printing artifacts like layers, these scars or very visible layer lines where the print tapers. All of those would be extremely noticeable after electroplating. That's why I'm showing three methods I regularly use to remove them. Before I start smoothing, I first work on the obvious spots with an X-Acto knife. Small overhangs or raised areas like these scars can be addressed this way in advance. I've had great experience with sanding meshes, someone suggested them in the comments once, and they work really well. They come in different grids and I start with 80. You can cut them and mount them on a sanding block or simply use them by hand. By feeling the surface, you can identify irregularities and target them specifically. I always make sure to avoid contamination from microplastics and other waste. I bind the removed material in water and dispose it properly. Now I have three specimens ready and I can get started with the first one. But wait, hold on. First, I make sure there's a proper ventilation in my workshop and then I test the emergency shower in case any fumes or harsh chemicals come into contact with my body. Yeah, jokes aside, PP is really important and you should pay attention to it. So lab coat, a respirator, goggles and you should be fine. This print is already quite smooth. Now I apply several layers of spray filler to eliminate the layer lines, making sure the coats are even. After that, the filler layer needs to be smoothed again. I had a sanding pad around here somewhere, but regular sandpaper works too. A bit of sanding and you can clearly see the uneven areas becoming visible. Don't over sand it. Now I apply multiple layers of primer alternating between grey and white. I didn't have black, which would have worked even better. This technique helps me to see exactly how much needs to be sanded. In the final step, I use an ultra fine sanding pad. All good, on to the next method. Next up, we have a type of putty. This stuff doesn't require a hardener and is designed to fill surface imperfections. When squeezed out, it's a bit too thick for my liking, so I use a small measuring cup to portion out a small amount, then add a bit of acetone to thin it down. After stirring well, I can apply this fast drying liquid with a brush. This process is relatively quick. Once dry, the rough surface needs to be sanded again. As with the previous method, you can clearly see the uneven areas as you sand. After applying two layers of primer and sanding once more, you get a beautifully smooth surface. And on to the next method. Welcome to the world of resin. You can either cure it with a UV light or use a two component resin that hardens through mixing. Here's a relatively well known one, but there are many other brands available. I'm going to try a standard casting resin with a one to one ratio. And soon we'll see why this wasn't such a great idea. First, I mix everything together, including some color so it's easy to see. Then I brush it on and while it's still wet, it looks pretty good. However, once it cures, it becomes very hard. The layer lines are gone and the surface is smooth, but uneven. That makes it tricky to achieve a mirror effect. I probably should have used resin specifically designed for 3D prints instead. <laughs> Let's go back and try 3D printing resin with UV light. I've had good experience with this method in the past. For this, I mix resin with baby powder and blend it thoroughly. Once mixed, I can apply it with a brush and then cure it using a small UV light. If you don't have a UV light, you can also use a curing station. 
<laughs> or both. After that, it's time for sanding and priming. And just like that, we have three smooth and even 3D prints. What's best? I think method one is the easiest and best, <laughs> if you ask me. To coat the prints, I need to make them conductive. As you probably already know, this can be done using graphite conductive paint or copper paint. However, these paints contain solvents that can attack the primer. I'll show you what I mean using this high heel model. First, I spray it with primer and let it dry. Then, I apply the graphite conductive paint and even while it's drying, you can already see cracks forming in the paint. And just like that, you can forget about electroplating it. I solved this problem by using a 2K acrylic lacquer. The two component lacquer is much more resistant to solvents. Now, I mix the components and, if needed, thin it down a bit. The airbrush does a great job with the lacquer, but it's crucial to let it dry for almost 9 days. As an alternative, polyurethane also works. I had some lying around. It's supposedly airbrushable, so I pour it into the tank and give it a go. But surprise, it doesn't work. Quick check with AI and okay, thinning it with water works in my case. This lacquer also needs a long drying time. If not, this happens. But if everything goes well, I can finally dip the stoppers into my acidic copper electrolyte and deposit a thick layer of copper on them. However, the bath looks a bit rough. Seems like it wasn't properly maintained after the last use. The copper sulfate crystals aren't a big deal and even the black layer is completely normal. You can actually leave it on. Still, I'm taking out the anodes and cleaning them up. Here you can clearly see the patterns in which the copper dissolves from the anodes. Another issue? There's debris from the anodes floating everywhere in the electrolyte. That's a no-go, because it can settle on the print, so it needs to be filtered out. Time to take the bath off the aeration station. I 3 printed a funnel insert to speed up the filtering process. Now I'm running the entire electrolyte through a coffee filter. Look at that. Once it's clean, I pour it back in. Quick pH test. Nice. pH 1. That's perfect. And I'm good to go. So this time I'm putting the anodes in a coffee filter to prevent any more debris from floating around into the electrolyte. And always secure everything, trust me on this. I connect the positive lead of the power supply and then somehow clip the round ball to the negative pole. Tricky, I know. Don't wrap the cathode wires too tightly around the 3D print and move it occasionally to avoid imprints. Set the constant current to 1 amps per square decimeter and wait for 4 hours. Aeration is working great. By the way. If you want to know how to set everything up correctly, I explain it in much more detail in my other videos. That's why I'm rushing through this part a bit, sorry. Alright, power supply off and time to take out the prints. Yeah, they look good. Nice and shiny, but achieving a true mirror effect still requires a lot of manual work. Start with 1000 grit sandpaper and work your way up with different polishing compounds. And after many, many hours, you'll have a properly polished piece. Different metals require different electrolytes. This green stuff here is for nickel plating and it behaves pretty much the same as the copper electrolyte. Just a lot more hazardous. One crucial thing to always remember. The metal must be grease free and free of oxidation. That's super important. Otherwise you get stains. And because it's always a highlight, here comes the gold electrolyte. This one works with a stainless steel anode and never fails to impress. And that's it. Done. Now I've also printed the vases that these stoppers fit onto. 3D printing is honestly my favorite part of this hobby. And I'm really grateful to have such amazing viewers on my channel who support this in any way. Memberships, comments, likes, shares. Huge thanks to all of you. So how does it look in the end? Here's the comparison again. The difference is really insane and the surfaces pop like crazy. There's this video where I try to hide from the reflection, but of course that's impossible. 
I hope I was able to give you some insight and uh, maybe share a bit of knowledge. Looking forward to the next video. Tschüss.